you know communication is so important and vital in every relationship very very vital communication is to marriage what engine oil is to a car so it's very very important that couples understand how important communication is and when a couple actively engage engage in effective communication they have solved a bulk of their marriage trouble because there is no trouble that effective and constant communication cannot handle why marriage wahala and marriage trouble go overboard and it appears as if there are no solutions is because the couples give up on communication because the couples because the couple give up on communication is because the couple don't communicate effectively so it is an important subject in marriage and like if you listen to some of the master classes i've thought remember we talked about words of affirmation under the five love languages there's something i said you know i said that um, words are creative in nature you know the entire universe the entire world was created by the word of god you know, by the word of god so whatever that is going wrong in your relationship can be solved with words you know can be solved with words it's something we need to understand and it's something that is worth noting there's nothing words cannot solve anything you want to create in your relationship you can create it with words by saying those things constantly you create them by cease by the cessation of saying negative things you know you kill negativity or the bad things in your relationship that you don't want to see you know when you stop so saying those negative things they stop being created then anything you want to create start saying them then you create them you speak life into your relationship you speak harmony into your relationship you speak unity into your relationship you speak productivity to your relationship by saying it constantly you create them so words are important very very important in every relationship by the time we go on you will have a better understanding of how important communication is you know another person said that what blood is to the human body is what communication is to marriage and that cannot be too far from the truth We're going to now look at what communication is. I think that communication is a process of sharing yourself, either verbally or non-verbally, with another person, with the aim of communicating understanding, or at the end of it, the both of you understand each other. That point is so important to note, because once understanding is absent, communication is not effective what makes communication effective is understanding of each other once understanding is absent communication is not effective so it's something that is worth noting so it's the process of communicating or sharing yourselves with each other you know it's a process of sharing yourself verbally or non-verbally with each other that at the end of the day both people understood themselves you know it's the ability to transmit thoughts and perceptions from one individual in such a way to make meaning to the other person. Another feature says, it is saying what you mean and understanding what you hear. You know, it is saying what you mean and understanding what you hear. Simply put. How do we communicate? The different ways of communicating. Like if you look, if you listen to the first definition, I said it is um, the process of sharing yourself verbally and non-verbally with each other so you can either communicate verbally or you can communicate non-verbally a lot of couples have, have uh, a lot of couples pride themselves in the ability to communicate with each other without saying words and that's good because they develop this relationship over time they've gotten to know each other and their methods and their means and their ways of communicating that they don't even need to use words to communicate so when you talk about ways of communication you have to look at verbal which is words and also non-verbal which can be a lot of things a lot of being I mean, a variety and a plethora of means way sign symbol body language tone of voice and all that you know that is um, involved in the entire communication process so we you see there are three carriers of communication three carriers of communication the first one is the actual content which is actually like the words used and the words um, spoken the actual content 
The next one is the tone of voice. The tone of voice you know, carries weight in the entire communication process. And the third is the non-verbal aspect of communication. So people that have studied communication and all that says that in every communication process, that the actual words spoken carry only 7%. 7%. Can you beat that? Just 7%, the actual word spoken. And they said that the tone of voice accounts for 38% of the message, the tone of voice. I can tell somebody, please, can you come here? And I can also say, hey, come here. Exact words, or almost exact words, you know. But the tone of voice has totally changed the understanding and the meaning I'm trying to pass or the message I'm trying to convey just by changing the tone of my voice, I've conveyed a totally different message. Then the third one, which is the non-verbal communication, they say carries up to 55% of the message. Can you beat that? The non-verbal aspect of communication even outweighs the tone of voice. Actual word, 7%. Tone of voice, 38%. The non-verbal communication, 55%. Question is, what is this non-verbal communication? It includes body language. You know, with which you used to communicate that message carries a lot of weight. That body, la- your, that body language, uh, maybe the way you gesticulated with your hands, the way your eyes uh, was either was wide open, piercing, or you're just normal, or you are maybe looking at somebody intently. You know, all of this gesticulation and body language carries weight. Carries weight. Maybe you're talking to somebody and you just shrug the tongue. You know, all those things also shows that whatever you're saying may not really be important. It shows nonchalancy. It shows that it may, it may be a sign of res- resignation or something. You know, your body language says a lot. You know, the frown on your face also says a lot. The way your face was looking when you are saying that thing says a lot. You know, you know, women do that a whole lot. That's why men need to look at the body language of their wives. And that most men don't even like some negative body language. I mean, they get so irritated with it. So you also know what works for your spouse or not. Some men might prefer you just come straight out and say, this is what is wrong. I'm not happy with you. I'm not happy with that, that, that. Instead of gesticulating, trying to convey the same message, using your body, using your behavior, using the way your mannerism, and expecting the man to read through that. Most men are not even that sensitive to pick up those signs. So like I was saying, so you, know, you need to know what works for your spouse. Because most times, most men... Don't even pick those of sign language and all that. So you need to study your spouse and vice versa, you know, so you guys can properly understand yourself. And a lot of marital issues arise due to misunderstanding. The communication was not effective. They didn't, there was a gap, there was a communication gap somewhere. They did not fully understand each other. And it leads to a lot of uh, marital issues. So studying yourself, getting to know each other better, you know, is the way to go when it comes to the communication process. So, um, uh, talking about the power of words, you know, I think I've done a little bit of that when we looked at um, uh, the five love languages. But I'll still say one or two things about that. You know, when you read James chapter 3, the Bible talks about the power of words, you know, and I'm particularly interested in Proverbs 15. See what the Bible says in Proverbs 15, 1 and 2. The Bible says that a soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. You know, verse um, out, the Numbers 14 28 also says something. The Bible says that as you have said to my ears, so will I do unto you. So God will not do what you did not say. That's why prayer, asking, is the principle. Say, as you have said to my hearing, so will I do unto you. So these scriptures say a lot about words. I can read more scriptures to buttress how important words are, how powerful they are. Proverbs 18 verse 20, the Bible says something. The Bible says that a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. The Bible now says in verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. You know, Decades ago, I used to think that that scripture says that the power of death and life are in the tongue. Until, you know, I got to read it properly and I discovered that there's no power in death, that the power actually is in the tongue. It's the tongue that has the power to bring death and life. You know, that is how important the tongue is. So important. So, 
the right choice of words, the right choice of words is critical and it is so key in the success of any marital union. We're going to talk about the heat that is in he that speaketh like the piercing of a sword. I see that speaking like a piercing of a sword. You know, there's some people that when they talk, their words cut into your heart. You know, so people like that should learn how to speak words instead of cutting the heart, words that will bring healing instead. I don't know, I feel like reading more scriptures. Let me see. Let me see. Proverbs, sorry, Proverbs. Proverbs 25, verse 11 says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Wow. You know, Solomon, the way he writes that is so poetic. You know, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Those are they, they mean actually is a is a is a picture of of the way couples should speak to, to each other with respect and decorum. You know, another scripture I like to read, Proverbs 21, verse 23. It says, Whosoever keepeth his mouth and his tongue. Keepeth his soul from trouble. Who else, whosoever keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keepeth his soul from trouble. You know, when you keep your mouth from speaking evil against another person, you prolong your life. You prolong your life. So words are in, uh, 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 words are dangerous, but also powerful. You can use them in the right and positive way, and you will make great gain from them. Guarding what you say, guarding what you say to your spouse. You know, choosing your words right, you know, before you speak to your spouse is so important. And when you are deliberate with your words, you will deliberately create, you know, heaven on earth kind of relationship, kind of union, you know, in your marriage. It is something that you need to work on. You know, I don't know if I, if you remember some of my earlier classes, I said something that marriage is all about work. You know, any marriage can work if both parties decide and pledge to work, to work on it. So the same thing about these words, choosing and working on the kind of words you use on your partner is work, but it is work worth the work. Obstacles of communication, what are the things that hinder effective communication? And one of the first things I'm going to point out here, one of the things that hinder effective communication is lack of truthfulness, lack of truthfulness. In that effective communication, it is a it's 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 it is it is a situation where you're not lying, but at the same time you're not also saying the truth. You know, you are not lying, but at the same time you're not saying the truth. It is dangerous. You know, the Bible says you are both naked and not ashamed. Meaning, a man and his wife should be open about everything. There shouldn't be secrets between the two of them. They should pour out themselves to each other, tell each other everything, so there will not be any loopholes in their relationship. So lack of truthfulness is very, very, very dangerous. It could be subtle. Let's see if you're not lying, but you're causing a lot of trouble, especially when in the future, that person realizes what the actual truth is because marriage is built on trust and communication. Open communication helps to build the trust. The second obstacle to communication is conflict. Conflict. What is conflict? Conflict is when there's a disagreement between the two of you. You know, things are not ro- um, rosy is not probably the right word. You guys are not chumsy with each other. You know, there is a little friction between the two of you based on one thing or the other. And there is a presence of conflict. You notice that whenever there's conflict, you know, they see both parties endeavor, try to keep to themselves and it affects communication. They don't talk as much as they should. They don't share, you know, things happen to them to 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 it to to them with their spouse so conflict is a major you know obstacle to effective communication and um, i always say that conflict on its own is not bad conflict is good because you guys are different two different people not living together under one roof so their tent or they are bound to be conflict i mean once in a while you guys will rub off on each other you know the wrong way so conflict is not bad what makes conflict bad is when it graduates into a quarrel now what is a quarrel a quarrel is still a conflict but this time around emotions have gotten into it emotions are now attached you can have conflicts without getting your emotions involved this is very important point this is a very 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 important point 
because you know in marriages a lot of things are insinuated you might have a conflict one party will misinterpret it as you are being mad annoyed or whatever with her and what they don't know like they're just trying to sort out something you are trying to you state something or you're trying to correct something it doesn't mean that the person is against you or after you or wanting or the other so you need to understand that conflict on its own is not bad when there's conflict is good remove every emotion take the correction and move on understand where your spouse is coming from and move on you know and pledge not to do that again don't get emotionally entangled with that conflict if you do you now take it a notch higher and it steps into quarrel quarrel now becomes a problem and he totally hampers communication you know so whenever there's a conflict you guys should sit down have an immature conversation about it talk about it iron out issues then reach a truce you know and now that's it you move on it doesn't affect the way you feel about each other and you continue communication is still free communication still goes on the way it was uh, before the conflict and everybody's happy that is the mature way of handling conflict the mature way is by removing every emotional entanglement and you know it becomes it even helps you guys become better you know you guys get to know each other better it, it, it strengthens the bond between the two of you so conflicts are good the next one i want to talk about is defensiveness you know, because of this self-preservation nature of, of man when something goes wrong and you are confronted the natural reaction is to defend yourself you know, it's natural god put that in every man self-defense that is why if a child puts his hand in a fire something sends a message the nerve endings on his finger sends a message to the brain and the next thing is that the brain triggers the muscle of the arm to pull itself and triggers the muscle of the arm to pull itself out from the fire as in the nerve and the set damage to the brain and the brain is that it as danger whatever is going on there where your finger is at is not good for the body it is harmful so it is natural in every human being but in a marriage relationship you need to understand that and ensure that you don't self-defend yourself especially when things are being eye on that remove that self-preservation don't be defensive don't try to make a case hear what the other person your spouse has to say and give him or her the opportunity to express himself or herself it also help you to 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 understand where the person is coming from and also identify with the person's feelings and emotional state at that point defensiveness is also you know an obstacle to effective communication and should be noted for such and should be avoided so it will not cause so much trouble in the communication process and your relationship with each other so now we're going to look at the five levels of communication the first level which is level one so that level one one of the characteristics of level one is that there is little verbal communication and body language sends most of the message in every communication process you know because there is slight discomfort and unease because see somebody you don't know you know usually when you meet somebody you don't know you don't open up yourself from day one you are a bit careful on how you open up yourself to that person so at this stage communication is is superficial it's very very superficial then after level one there's level two and you step into level two now one thing you notice at this level two is that communication is from the head and not yet from the heart you know before you speak you rehearse it in your head and you speak you calculate it you try to choose the right words and all that before you speak so communication is from the head and not from the heart at level two stage and after level two stage you will notice that there's usually extra effort made to communicate to talk you know you make extra effort it's not yet flowing you know hard like water yet you know so you make extra effort to talk to each other you, know, you might talk about something once that topic has been exhausted you know there's a bit of a, an, an awkward silence for a while then one person will make effort again to bring up something else you're like okay how was your day oh fine how was work oh beautiful this happened that happened oh fine okay and you keep quiet then you now notice there's awkward silence and one person again will be like oh, okay tell me about what you, what did you have for lunch oh i had um i had rice beans i had mcdonald's or that. oh nice oh, okay was it nice oh it was nice but i've done better i wanted to eat but i didn't blah 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 ah. Then there's another awkward silence again until another person again makes an effort to talk so at this stage you know um, communication is not yet as smooth as you want it to be you know an extra effort is necessary to 
keep the conversation going. Well, at this stage, you don't um, divulge extra information. You, you give precise answers to questions asked. You don't go explain anything. You don't go telling extra tale, you know. You just answer straight to the point and that's it. But at level three, you still stick to your ideas and your opinion and you don't go beyond it. You say, you communicate your ideas, you communicate your opinion, like level two where you just communicate from your head. Now you've gone a bit, you've taken the next step of letting the other person know what you think about stuff. You know, this is what I think. This is my stand about this. I don't believe this should be this or this should be that. You know, you you state your ideas, you state your opinion, you give your opinion about issues and raised all the things you guys are discussing, you know, at level three and level three, but you don't go beyond it. At this stage, your emotions still, and your emotions still are not yet involved at this stage, communication stage. Another thing you note in level three communication is that why you stick with your ideas and your opinion and you don't yet open up your heart, your feeling, you know, how you feel is that uh, you're still not sure. You don't want your feelings to be rejected or trampled upon. So you're still a bit cautious and you're still on guard. You know, but at level four, communication, the heart begins to talk. You begin to share your heart. You begin to share your feelings. You're not, be- you're not opening up more than you used to. You know, the walls are gradually, you know, coming down. So you can see how you feel about things. And you are not really do a bit skeptical of how the other person will take it. Will he say you are unreasonable, or will he say you are this or you are that? Will he have a negative opinion about you know what you feel about things? You know, but you now trust that person to some extent to at least accept you for who you are. You know, but you're still standing on one leg. But in level five, the trust is total. The trust is a hundred percent. You are not holding anything back at level five. You are not afraid of how your feelings will be taken. Even if it's not taken the way you expect it, you are not really hot or you are never hot at all. Because in level four, if it's not taken as the way you expect, you will be hot. But in level five, you're not hot. You just move on. And that doesn't stop you tomorrow to open up again about how you feel and all that. Now, this level five communication is the best place every couple should be at. This is a level where it's ideal where in level five you don't think before you speak actually you speak straight from the heart you know exactly how you feel you just say it you don't need to rehearse it anymore you don't need to ponder will he accept it will he like it will he not like it how will he take it what will he say will he all those other you know hindrances that have been stopping you from opening up are no longer there this is the perfect place this is where the bible says they were naked and not ashamed this is where every couple should aim at being where yeah, they don't have to think about telling their spouse what they term as secrets. You know, they open up, tell the man anything, tell the ladies everything, open up about their, about, about their past. At this level of communication, nothing should be hidden from your spouse. Nothing, absolutely nothing, because the two of you are now one. I actually say it this way, if the two of you are actually in one body, what you will notice is that you guys will have one mind. And when you have one mind, both, people, both personalities have access to the memory and you notice that there are no firewalls, there are no security, you know, barriers, nothing is hidden, everything is said, everything is known and this is where every couple should journey to in their communication quest. So, as I end, what are the five basic steps to basic communication? Number one, take time out for each other. Make out time to spend with each other. Quality time is the best way to increase your communication up to the extent it becomes truly effective. You know, spend time with each other. Talk a whole lot. You know, talk about everything and talk about nothing. Number two, take responsibility for communicating the way you feel to your spouse. Don't expect your spouse to know how you feel by all your body language. No, 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 no. That is one of the major barriers to communication. Take the responsibility of communicating how you feel to your spouse, yourself. Don't assume he knows. Don't assume she knows. Uh, she should read between the lines now. She should use her tongue and count her teeth. She should know. No, no, no. I'm going to say this a hundred times. No. If you feel somehow, communicate it. You feel somehow, communicate it. Your, I mean, it is your 
responsibility to communicate how you feel. So the third thing I want us to discuss here is realize there are differences in perceptions and feelings. Realize there are differences in perceptions and feelings. The way you feel about this might not be the way your spouse feels about it and you need to understand that and appreciate that. And you thought about male and female differences. That's why you guys are different. You guys were raised from two different backgrounds, two different backgrounds. So don't expect that the way you think and feel is the same way your spouse will think and feel. But you know what? When you guys start communicating and um, the marriage process kicks in, that you guys get married and you start communicating, start living with each other, you start sharing with each other your thoughts, your, your feelings. You know what will happen? You, you guys now start that process of becoming one. It gets to a point. How you feel is the way she feels. How she feels is the same way you feel. What your opinion about a matter becomes her opinion about that matter. You guys are now becoming one. You know, but it's a process. You know, and it actually doesn't end till death. So, but while this is going on, understand that you guys are different. You guys come from two different backgrounds and you guys are supposed to have different perception until you start that process of becoming one. Now, the fourth one, very, very important, is become an attentive listener. Don't be a hearer, be a listener. You know, don't hear her talk, but listen to her talk. Don't hear him talk, but listen to him talk. Most times, this exasperates a lot of men. They talk to their wives, tell, communicate how they feel, give instructions here and there, and the woman goes ahead and does what she feels like doing. It pisses a man off. You know, what you're saying to the man is that you truly did not listen to me. And uh, that is what you're actually saying. But the man interprets it that, oh, I don't mean anything to you. My words don't matter. You, you, you listen to me talk and you go ahead and do what you have in your heart. That is how men interpret it. And, you know, it causes a lot of conflict and quarrel in that union, which ought not to be so. You know, so be an active, be an attentive listener. Then finally, confirm what you hear. This is so important. You might have passed on an information and you assume that that person understood what you said and you go about your business later to find out that that person did not even understand what you said. So, like I said, the responsibility of communicating how you feel lies on the person that feels that way. You communicate how you feel to the person. Then the responsibility of ensuring understanding and comprehension of the listener also lies on the communicator. The person passing on the message should, after passing on the message, confirm if the message was properly comprehended, was properly understood. It is your responsibility, not the listener's responsibility. So after you've said something, look for another method to confirm if that person understood what you said. That increases effective communication. Like I said, communication is passing on information to another party. The effective communication does not end at personal information to another party. It continues. Effective communication says that it is communicating, sharing yourself either verbally or non-verbally with another person and ensuring that the message is understood. Because if it's not understood, you will not get the correct response to that message which you passed. So this is where we end this masterclass. Glad to have you. God bless you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and look at the other, other masterclasses on relationship that I have. And very soon I'm going to have masterclass on uh, success coming soon. So you make sure you hit me up, subscribe to my channel so you get a notification whenever a new class is uploaded. God bless you.